Magnetism is the repellent reaction to electricity, not an attractive force. It must be remembered that electricity is the attractive force and magnetism is the repellent force. The attractive force attracts only the attractive force which is itself. Electricity does not attract the repellent force. Neither does electricity repel the repellent force. On the other hand, magnetism which is the repellent force does nothing but perform its function of repelling. It does not attract itself. A repellent force cannot be an attractive force nor can attractive force be in a repellent force. The energy of magnetism is the elastic energy of expansion, a straining energy ever pushing towards the inertial line of equalized pressure which lies between any two masses, while the energy of electricity is ever pulling towards the pulsing heart, the gravitational nucleus of every mass. Magnetism is the brake upon the wheels of electricity resisting its generation of higher potential and registering that resistance as heat. Electricity is the accelerator which speeds magnetic radiation, the expansion of which is registered in cold. Electricity and magnetism are actually opposing forces which leap away from each other in exactly the opposite directions. Forces which depart one from the other do not attract each other opposing forces oppose each other. Magnetism opposes electricity in its desire to transform this universe into a one solid, motionless, non-elastic ball of positive electricity. Electricity opposes magnetism in its desire to transform the universe into one equalized pressures where opposites disappear into dimensionless non-opposition. It is commonly supposed that the north pole of a magnet is the positive pole which attracts and the south pole of a magnet is a negative pole which repels. The apparent ability of the positive pole of a magnet to attract the, the negative and the negative to attract the positive has been one of the evidences which has built up the theory that opposite charges attract, attract and like charges repel. The evidence that light charges repel is as convincing as the moon keeps pace with moving man, or that the earth is flat. It is evidence one can really see, like other illusions of motion. The truth is the north is the apex of a cone into which a supernormal electric stream is flowing due to electrical excitation. The reason that the south pole of the bar of iron appears to attract the north pole of the compass needle is that the electric stream is flowing through both the iron and the needle in the same direction from south to north. The so-called magnetized bar of iron is one in which a strong electric, electric inductive current has so greatly contracted the contracted the generative and expanded the radiative cones of energy of the atoms of the iron that the polar magnetic bases and their ecliptic expansions have been vastly reduced and the speed of the generative and radiative flows correspondingly increased. Atoms of iron not so treated leap towards these faster moving streams. The term magnetized was given to iron so treated because iron exposed to the magnetic field of a generative coil always causes this effect. The magnetic field of a generative coil is the radioactive emanation or discharge of an overcharged coil. It is the degeneration of a generating charge when it leaves the generative coil. In other words, it is the leakage of or overflow from an overfilled receptacle. Not so, however, when it impacts against the iron. The iron bar becomes electrified, not magnetized. The bar of iron and the so-called magnetic poles of a revolving rotating mass, such as this planet, are two different effects. Every mass, such as a planet, is supposed to be a magnet. It is, but not like the magnetized bar of iron or the compass needle. It is a double magnet. Its two charging poles meet head-on at the gravitative center of the planet and the oppositely flowing electric streams meet there. In any mass, when these two streams meet, they oppose and spread against each other's force in the direction of the ecliptic plane area of the mass. It is commonly supposed that the magnetic pole of this planet is analogous to a bar magnet, being one continuous bar extending from the negative Antarctic south to the positive Arctic north. 
The north attractive positive pole of the planet appears to attract the north attractive positive pole of the compass, and the south repellent negative pole of the planet appears to attract the north attractive positive pole of the compass. The explanation lies in the fact that the one north direction of attraction in the bar of iron and the compass is continuous, while the two north directions of the attraction in the planet are opposed. They meet at the center of the Earth at the apices of two opposing cones. The magnetic bases of the cones are respectively in the Arctic and Antarctic regions. As mass generates, the magnetic bases disappear through the poles and reappear at the, at the equator. It has previously been explained that the north of any mass is its gravitative center. The direction north is along the electric axis of this contracting cones of generation from their bases to their apices. North is always in the direction of general activity, high pressure and high potential. In any mass, north is the gravitative radiative center where the ability to attract and repel is at its maximum. On the contrary, south is always in the direction of radioactivity, low pressure and low potential. South is an extension of the equatorial plane which divides any mass. It is the part of a mass where the radiative emanations are at their maximum. It is the plane of the disappearance of the contours of the expanding cones of radiation. It must continually be borne in mind that the electricity contracts and attracts from within and that magnetism expands and repels also from within. The Universal One, pages 172 through 174.